It's Go Fast Day here at Pensacola Super Speedway as we are setting up for single car qualifying at the season opener as we have the field set. We just need to put them in order. First up on the grid, Ryan Griffin after the slowest practice time earlier in the week. He's going to be the first to set a lap here at Pensacola to start us off at single car qualifying as he's rounding four to begin his very first lap. Ryan Griffin has competed in the last few seasons, but only in little spots. Last season it was part-time for both Roush Racing and Club Roush Racing, but the season before he has subbed in for Aiden Shepard after his injury, his first injury of two that would come in th that season and the next. So Griffin out here today in his first full-time start for Shock Allison Racing, trying to start it off well, but he's the first to go. He doesn't get much preparation. So as he rolled up, rolls down the back straight, we will see what he can do in his first full-time run in this number six car. As he's rounding three and four, he's out of three and four. And he'll come down to the line to set the very first lap of qualifying. It'll be a 52-182. That's going to set the mark for runs to come. We're not sure if that's good or bad. We're just going to have to wait and see. And next up on track, second to go in in uh, single car qualifying de la Lillard Irvine, the Frenchman in the number seven, his new Warsteiner number seven scheme this season as he exits onto the track. Again, he'll have to, his time to beat right now is Ryan Griffin's 52.182 if he wants to take the lead. But he's in a rank C compared to, uh, compared to Ryan Griffin's rank B, so a little bit of an uphill battle for the Frenchman. Uh, Irvine coming off his best season of 15th in points last season, which was the first time a rank C had ever gotten two wins in a single season as he begins his lap. Irvine coming into this season with a high on confidence because of last season. We'll see what he can do with that today. Nice speed run, one and two. He's won at a few super speedways now. If I correct, he won at Talladega last season. Uh, after almost winning there back at season one, it was a nice uh, arrangement after all that time. So Irvine knows how to drive a super speedway. He just needs to get the job done here at Pensacola as he's gonna round turns three and four and he beat Ryan Griffin's time. 52.182, can he beat it to the line? No. 52.402 for Benoit Leverine here at qualifying. That's almost three tenths. It's actually about 2.2 tenths behind 22 hundredths behind. Ryan Griffin, so not what he's looking for here at Pensacola. <laughs> and next up on track, Vance Caldwell for Thunder Sport Racing Australia this season uh, as the assets for his team were sold over as this will be his last season, so this will be the last opener he will make as he comes out at two. Caldwell been in every single season but as said this will be his last so it's the last opener he will get to run to see if he can make it count here in qualifying time to beat is Ryan Griffin's 52.182 as usual as he runs into three and four his pace doesn't seem to be there we need a little bit more if he wants to catch up that's a little bit better as he improves a lot out of four to 202 at the line as he comes and barrels down 
towards turns one and two. He's on about Benoit there being space, which is not enough because he, Benoit is two and a half tenths down almost. So unless Caldwell can speed it up just a little bit, it looks like this may be Griffins over Caldwell's right now. Not a good run out of two at all. That was a terrible run out of turn two. Did not gain any mile per hour and probably lost some time as he comes down in the three and four. Nice run through three and four though. Can he make it up? Out of three and four, down to the line. Can he beat 52-182? Yes! The 52-012 for Vance Caldwell here in his last qualifying run in the season opener of his career. Good job, Vance Caldwell, on his run. And next up on track is the 41 of Jeffrey Fingai from one goodbye tour to another. This is Jeffrey Fingai's last season returning to the team that started his career and it's gonna end his career as he rounds two to start his qualifying lap. Can he make it count? Certainly not with that speed lost. Ooh, that was not a good exit onto the back straightaway. He's got a lot of mile per hour to make up. Jeffrey Fingai, another person who's been around every single season. Has two wins to his name coming in uh, Kansas Season 3 and Calder Park Season 3. So, as he crossed the finish line at 202 mile per hour, he made up a lot of the mile per hour that he lost. Actually, is about matching... Uh, Vince Caldwell now. So very good job as he's coming into two. Jeffrey Fingai just trying to make it count and try to get himself back to a possible win scenario. Another eh, run out of two for uh, the drivers. The drivers are kind of struggling this season with getting out of two, but as he comes in to three and four, can he catch Caldwell? I don't think so. I think he's going to come in between Griffin and Caldwell here. As he rounds four, after a bad entry onto the back straightaway, he will get the front. It's a 51-963, very good performance after the shaky uh, opening lap. But he will get himself on pole currently, even though it's out of just four drivers. It's good to see that Fingai still has it. Good job, Fingai. Next up is another longtime veteran of the sport. This is Nick Hercules for Scott Ganassi Racing. A lot of the big, bigger veterans actually starting closer to the front, surprisingly of qualifying and not near the rear, although we do have some of the bigger veterans near the rear, uh, like Max Anderson, who will be last to go, but Nick Pericles, another veteran who's been around since season one, but he was the first person ever to pull a double in Snoko Elite Series history, uh, winning round four and five of season one for CJ Racing back when that was a thing. Since then, since that team shut down, he uh, juggled to Epic Motorsports, off Epic Motorsports in here at Scott Ganassi, where he's been ever since. This will be his third season at Scott Ganassi, but not an amazing start for Nick Pericles at all. 206 in the corner compared to the 208 that Finn Guy and Caldwell had. This is not the run he wants. He's going to need a good run out of two if he wants to do anything against those two which he won't get, so this is not going to match Jeffrey Fingai definitely at this point. Pericles just not up to speed in this qualifying run, and it's not what Scott Ganassi wants. This is going to be around the 52-5 range, which is going to be the worst of everyone so far. 
But Nick Pericles rounds four as he'll finish up his qualifying lap. I'm guessing 52.5. 52.5. 52.5 for one. Or Nick Pericles will be last in the order so far. Tough luck for Nick Pericles on this run. Just did not get the run he wanted out of two to start hit, to get into his uh, start lap, and it just didn't work out. So bad luck for Nick Pericles. Breaking a streak of season one veterans here in qualifying is going to be a season two veteran, Sean Angel. In the number 22 for Red Stallion Racing, it's the first rank D to hit the track, which is really going to judge how they're going to do here in qualifying. The exit sound on the track, another person with not a good launch out of two like Fingai, but Fingai ended up getting into pole. And in a rank D, he's got a lot more to make up than the rank B of Jeffrey Fingai. One thing is no rank A's have gone just yet. So we, we can't really judge if the guy's act, time is actually quick until we can actually see what rank A's can do. But as he exits turn four, the first rank D to hit the track. Very nice turn four exit. 199 at the line. That's not what you want, though. Ooh, that is not a good entrance into turns one and two. And it's just because he just could not get the run out of two out of the pits and this is not going to be a good run for Sean Angel not at all this is going to be worse than Nick Pericles Sean Angel last season's Royale winner so there was a lot of high hopes for him but after being put down Red Stallion it seems that his morale seems to not be up as he exits turn four to end his lap, which will most likely be last below Nick Pericles. Cross line at 53 0. Brad Stallion, not a good start for them after just barely making it in. No speed here in qualifying. Thundersport will be the first team to enter the track twice. And now it is Gerard Ron on track for Thundersport Racing Australia. His teammate Vance Caldwell right now sitting second. So there is hope that he can do well here. As he exits too, can he get a good exit off? Beautiful exit. Did not lose any speed. That is very good hopes for Gerard Ron. As long as he can get a good run through three and four, he's set for a great lap. Oh, but not gaining much speed through three and four. Now he's starting to gain it. Out of three and four. There's the big jump. 202 across the line. And you get up to 208, which is where Fingai and Caldwell were. No, 207, just barely below him. Now he peaks 208. Just barely there as he turns two. Now he actually got a good run through two. When he exits, can he get a good run through two now? No. People are continuing to struggle. The first person to be able to get that and gain a lot of speed out of two is going to be the guy to get pole position. But it's not going to be Gerard Aran. Aran, been around since season one as well. Has been winless his entire career, along with Laughter Stukel. Both of them have been around through the entire series. No wins. But as Aran turns three and four, he won't get pole. But he'll most likely be around third. Aran crosses the line. It's a 52-266. It's fourth. Below Ryan Griffin and above Benoit Derveen. So not a bad run overall. Right smack in the middle of the pack uh, currently, so Aram can't be too mad with that performance. Next up on track is our first Monarch of the qualifying session. This is DJ Curtis in his sophomore season after having a Decent season in his rookie season, not matching Dan Bartlett, who will be up next. Uh, but DJ Curtis 
trying to make his team happy with a great exit of the pits, a lot like a Ron's. Can he get a lap near the front? There's only one other Ford that has gone so far, but that was Nick Pericles, and he's second to last. So he's got to be a little nervous about the power of the Ford right now. As he hits 190 as he turns turn four, 192 as he gains the speed out of four that everyone gains. 201 as he hits the line. Can he reach 207 like a Ron? No, 206. Now he hits 207. BJ Curtis. Ain't no rookie anymore. He competed back in season two during the Royale, but then took a long hiatus for returning in season five. So DJ Curtis, it's been a while, it had been a while since we've seen him, but season five went pretty decent for him. Got a re-sign back to Monarch Motorsports as he turns three and four to end his lap. Hasn't been a fantastic lap. Looks like it's going to be around Orban while the ravine is. So around where the other rank C is, so not too bad. As he turns turn four across the line, it'll be a 52 470, just ugh. Below Benoit the Deravine in sixth. Out of eight, that's not very good, but it's what he can do. Not too bad for DJ Curtis. As said, exiting the track onto the track here is Dan Bartlett, the second and last trailblazer to enter the track. Here at Pensacola Super Speedway, both trailblazers did not get too good of a run in practice, so they went pretty early here in qualifying. So this will be the last run for Trailblazer. Bartlett's teammate Benoit there being a team owner currently sits P5 out of 8. We'll see if he can top that as it's another good run out of two. But can he put it together and get a good run out of four? Through three into four. The speed begins to go up. He needs to just get a great run out of turn four. As he's up to fourth gear, he'll start to gain the speed. 201 across the line. That's about where... Uh, Curtis was 206. It's the corner. This is pretty similar to what DJ Curtis was running. Not running the apron. Don't want to run too low or you're going to lose too much speed. As he is out of two. Another uh, run out of two. No speed gain. He'll keep a constant 201 mile per hour as he turns into four. Three and four. Now he's losing speed into three. Can he gain it back in four? He's starting to gain it back. 202 at 203 as he exits four. He'll gain a lot of speed down to the line. Can he beat his teammate? No. Just barely, he will be right below him in sixth. Yeah, 52438 compared to the wall there being 52402. So, Trailblazers is very similar right now with the BMWs. So, all right job for Dan Bartlett. It'll be sixth out of nine. Nice. The first rank A hits the track here at single car qualifying. The 10th car to go for season four champion, Cordell Paulson. Hits the track here at Pensacola. Right now the time to beat is a 51.963, the only sub-52 so far out of Jeffrey Fingai. Can Paulson top that being the first rank A to hit the track? Good run out of two. That's gonna be it's gonna be giving Fingai a little bit of worries because he really got the short end of the stick coming out of two. But he made it all back up getting back to the line. Although this is not looking too good out of Cordell Paulson so far, it's not exactly what you'd expect as a, out of a rank A. Although it was, it was an excellent run out of four. Catches back up to 201. Can he get himself up to 208 where Finn Guy was? No. 207. 
as he holds the throttle wide open through turns one and two as we come down out of two. This is where everyone's struggling to get speed is out of two. And it's the same deal for Paulson, 201 down the back straightaway. This is about where Irvine and Bartlett were clocking. That's not where you want to be if you're Paulson as a rank A. The speed, this is not an amazing run for Cordell Paulson. And the first run for Full Frontal Motorsports in this qualifying session, not going as expected. But he got a good run here last time, and it's a decent one. It'll be a 52-4-9-8. That will be below DJ Curtis. That is not the run Cordell Paulson would have wanted. But it's going to be the one that he's going to have to deal with. Cordell Paulson going to be currently in 8th place out of 10 so far. 10 people have gone so far out of the 42 in the field. And F Jeffrey Fingai seems to be setting the pace so far. But next up is Daniel Bouchard, the first and only driver for Monaco Dynasty Racing as Steven Thompson did not make it through the shootout. So Bouchard is going to be representing this team by himself today. So a lot of pressure on his back from the team to perform. But Daniel Bouchard, although he had to go through the shootout, he already had his time set from practice, so he didn't have to go again. Only the three part-timers had to go and set a time, which they will be coming up later. They actually did surprisingly well. So we will see them later. It's so far going well for Daniel Bouchard. This is a very good run. Uh, but not the run he would have wanted out of four. Through four was fantastic, but out of four was a completely different question. 207 as he hits the corner. That is behind Jeffrey Fingai. Caldwell, Griffin. Griffin's done very well so far. But Bouchard, with where he's clocking right now, I predict he's probably right ahead of Benoit there Ravine. Somewhere around fifth. Which fifth for Daniel Bouchard out of 11 so far would not be bad for representing Monaco Dynasty Racing if he can pull it off as he's in the three and four. The Interstate Batteries, number three Ford Mustang. As it rounds turn four, Daniel Bouchard gonna set his time. It will not take pole position from Jeffrey Finguy, but it will be a good time overall. A 52-360, exactly where I thought it would be. Fifth place for Daniel Bouchard and will take the lead when it comes to the rank D's. Very good result for Daniel Bouchard in qualifying for his first career start. That is very impressive. Good job for Daniel Bouchard. Coming out on track, rounding turn two, this is PJ Karenko, the shootout winner for Fallout Racing. Both Fallout Racing cars did make the show. PJ Krenko, they actually pulled a 1-2 in the shootout, so a lot of confidence right now going for this team. They seem to be the strongest team right now when it comes to the lower ranks. And that must be giving them a ton of confidence going forward. Krenko, no doubt he may be a threat. But so far the speed isn't there. Ooh, nice run out of four. But not good enough. 200 at the line, not the 201 we usually see. On average, this is not going well for the shootout winner. 206 into the corner. This is about Bartlett speed. As the speed starts to descend as he turns through two. Out of two, can he keep it above 200? He will at 201. As he barrels down the back straightaway. Not the run the shootout winner would have wanted. DJ Karenko, first time back since season three. This is not going to be a good run. Maybe between Paulson and Pericles, maybe? Maybe below that, even. Maybe between Pericles and your last place driver. Is he going to be there? It's going to be a 52-6-3-7 as predicted. That is going to be 11th out of 12 so far. That is not the run that PJ Kronko wanted. The shootout winner 
who we thought had the speed. It looks like he may not have as much as we anticipated. We've seen the starts of two goodbye tours as they stand one and two in the order. So next up is Laughter Stukol in the start of her last year in the sport. The final person who announced their retirement at the end of this season. Can she match the other two who are in their last seasons? They currently hold the front row. Can Laughter Stukol break that? 187 as she hits the corner. That's not amazing speed, but it's not bad. She'll need a good run out of four, though, if she wants to catch Caldwell and Finn Guy. As she exits turn four, a good run here is what she needs. And that may be what she just got. A little bit slow near the end, but it's 201 near the 202 mark. Uh, 207 that was not an amazing run up the front stretch and now who turns one and two looking at near the apron but not on the apron 202 out of the corner yes keeping it around 202 that's around where Daniel Bouchard and uh, yeah it's around where Daniel Bouchard was lapping in the 52 three if you can keep it around there that'd be good People like to stay up near that first line, the first white line you see there. That's where people like to run so they can get a good run out of these corners. A little lower than usual for Stukol, but out of the corner, nice run. Comes down to the line. It'll be a 52-399. That is below Daniel Bouchard in three thousands ahead of Benoit the Veravine. It is a good run for Laughter Stukol in the Hood Huddleston Stukol Racing Sony number 13 Chevrolet in her last qualifying at Pensacola. It's a good result for the Rank D team. She's the only one left representing her team. The other two were out in the shootout, so it's a good result to pull through for her team. And the first part-time car hits the field here at Pensacola qualifying. This is Sean Ard for Fitzwater Australia Racing who held pole position in the shootout, did not win the shootout. That was the person who went forward. That was uh, DJ Krenko. But Ard had a nice performance, got himself through into the show. Now it's his turn to make his lap. He's one of three part-timers who made the show. All three part-timers who competed made the show. And that would be Ard in the nine here. Chris Dodd would be way later. Chris Dodd had a great lap. Uh, when he set his lap to get in. So expect him way later and uh, then the 11 of Cody Lamas will be up in just a bit. As we come down to the line, it was a good run out of four for Sean Ard. Not a fantastic one as he reaches 206 as he turns into one and two. This is not an amazing lap. He'll need to hold his speed through two if he wants to start rivaling the people near the front. Ard for Fitzwater Australia Racing. I believe he's the first Fitzwater to go. The other three will be up in a bit, and soon we'll get to see Julio Caesar back in a full-time car for his first time. So that's going to be fun. But Sean Ard is what it's about right now as he turns into three and four. Ard going to be making not only his rookie start here, but his rookie start in the Panasonic Light Series. Uh, for Freeze Team Racing. So, as he comes out of four, can he make a good first impression here at Pensacola Super Speedway as he crosses the line? 52.459, that is right below Dan Bartlett. Not an amazing lap, but it's not a bad one, I'd say, because we're talking eighth out of 14. That's not bad for Fitzwater Australia Racing. It's not the best ranked C, but he's a rookie, so good job for Sean Art. And next up is the guy number one on the all-time win list. This is nine-time winner William Brock, team leader and owner of the best team in the league, Full Frontal Motorsports. If anyone in the, in the field is a threat to take pole position, it's this guy. Brock still looking 
for the legendary win number 10. As he went winless last season for his first time since the very first season. Now it's his turn to try and make up some time here and get a win early. But first, he's got to go for pull. Although this lap isn't looking fantastic so far. Got to take the green here. Oh, not an amazing exit either. Brock, 199 at the line. That was a little bit of a weird exit out of the corner. Had to shift gears in a weird spot, and that's not going to be good for the driver of the 01. Again, the person who's expected to be one of the best this season, number one on the all-time win list, this is not going incredibly well. Out of two at 201, he salvaged a little bit, and he's starting to salvage some time back. He's just got to use the power of the rank A car here and just try to push it through to a decent result. His teammate Cordell Paulson, fourth to last. Can Brock beat that? I didn't think we'd be asking that question, but he might not. Cross the line. No. It's a 5-7-8. That is below Pericles. That's third to last for William Brock. Out of everyone in the field, we expected him to be the one to battle for pull. Be the one who could take down Jeffrey Fingai, but not even close. William Brock. Unfortunate result for him, but he'll be starting near the rear, it looks like. Next up is the driver of the number 11, the person filling in for Julio Caesar after Caesar was trapped into a full-time ride. The person taking his uh, part-time race is one with his own. This is Cody Lamas the number 11 going for the part-time championship to start it off he's gonna have to look at Sean Ard with a 52 459 it's probably his mark to beat to be the lead rookie they not the lead rookie the lead part-time the lead rookie right now is uh, Daniel Bouchard in fifth or no it's Griffin in third rookies are doing well uh, but as we come through three and four Cody Lamas this is a nice setup I am impressed. Cody Lamas is looking very quick right now, and he's a rookie. Wow. 203 across the line. I think we may have a new pole sitter. 209 into the corner. That's a first. That's the first time we've seen someone peak 209. I think Finn Guy, he lasted long, but I think it's over. His reign might be over, and it's his teammate who may knock him out of that slot. Cody Lamas down the back straightaway at 204 miles per hour. What a run for the rookie, Cody Lamas, into three. A part-time car got pole position here last season with Roman Ray Hall. Can another one get it here today? It'll only be provisional for now, but out of four, he's got it. No way. No way he doesn't cross the line. 51, 8, 3, 3. That's provisional pole position for Cody Lamas and Clever Haas Racing. will hold a 1, 2. As of now, Finn Guy gets dethroned out of pole. Great, absolutely phenomenal job for Cody Lamas here in qualifying. And for the first time since season four, Honda will hit the track in qualifying. This is Alexander Rowe for Maverick Wolf Racing. It's the first time Maverick Wolf Racing is going to hit the track in qualifying. With Rowe, Rowe was the worst of his team. Surprisingly, Rowe was expected to be the best of the team this year. Uh competing with Jackson for that but it was Philip Scott who was the best for the team in practice Rowe going to be first to go here in qualifying for this team it's not an amazing start it's weird to see someone like Rowe not getting an amazing jump after Cody Lamas absolutely dominated 
201, almost 202 at the line for Alexander Rowe as he hits into one and two at 207. This is not a bad run so far. For Rowe, this is not bad. As he turns through two, out of two at 202 miles per hour. Surround so Bouchard again. Another one of these. 201 now as it starts to descend as he goes into three and four. But the moment he hits four, that's when the speed starts coming back. Row, rounding three and four. This may be around Ryan Griffin. At a 52-1, 52-2. Row as he crosses the line from Maverick Wolf Racing. It'll be a 52-3-9-6. He will barely beat Stuko by three thousandths. And that will put him into seven. Not a bad result for Row. Could have been better. But it still leaves the Clubberhouse Racing 1-2. Row. Not bad. And next up on track, it's, if I'm correct, the second Monarch. This is team owner and leader William Carlson Jr. with the Ford Alliance. Ford so far has not performed well. They've had their struggles. Um, we'll see if Carlson can make that. Oh, that was not... A good exit out of two. That's around where Finn Guy was, which Finn Guy's second now, so you never know. That might work. But he has some speed to make up. He has time to make up. God, I wonder how good that lap out of Finn Guy would have been if he would have got a good launch out of two. As we come around into four, out of four, it'll be Carlson down to the line to start his lap. Good makeup, but not an amazing one. 201. Two oh six into the first corner. Carlson back in season four. He won this race. Over Fitzwater. Was able to stay near the front all race long and got the win. So he knows this track. But 201 as he exits the corner. This is not an amazing run. I do not, no, he is not going to be beating Cody Lamas' 51.8. Again, if I had to predict, it's going to be around the 52 fours. Although, not bad of a run through three and four. Was able to keep it around the 199, 200 range. Not bad, didn't lose much speed. It'll be a 52.4, 7.4. That's going to put him below Curtis and above Cordell Paulson. A lot of people in the 52-4 range, so it's easy to be up high or down low depending on how far into the fours you are. This one wasn't too good. And Carlson Jr., not the one he probably would have wanted. And next up is your fan favorite in the field. This is Vince Freeze in the Maytag number 35 car for Roush Racing Enterprises replacing Ryan Monaco after his retirement last season. Lots of high hopes for him. No one really expecting him to win the title. A lot of people really like this guy. <laughs> He's everyone's personal favorite in the field as Vince Freeze turns into three and four. Let's see how good of a run he can get. The previous Hood Huddleston Stuco racing driver for the 53 before Connor Monaco stood into that car. Now it's his turn in Roush Racing Enterprise. It's a 201 across the line. Not amazing. Vince Freeze. It's another rank A. Kind of struggling. The rank A's just don't seem to have the pace, which is strange because they're the fastest cars in the field. Highest rank A currently, Rowe, in 7th. Not bad, but could be better. And, eh, Freed's got a decent run at, um, for 2, though. He was at 202. Although, I don't think it's going to do much. 
Probably once again another person in the 52 4 range, it looks like. As he is out of three and four, he's gonna cross the line. Again, I had to get I have to guess around a 52 4. 52 3 8 2, so he surprised me a little bit. And that's gonna be the highest rank A. Okay. Sixth place, taking row spot. So actually impressed me a little more than I thought it would be. I didn't think that run was as good as it was, but good job Vince Freeze, that is sixth position. And next up, Dak Jovic for Scott Ganassi Racing. It is the second member of Scott Ganassi Racing coming out on track. Uh, Dak Jovic, the oldest member in the field. He led the points for the first half of the season last season, and he's very much a threat, but so far, his speed does not seem to be up for it. Uh, he's improving a little bit. Gonna need more than that, though. Good. i uh, switch to fourth gear. Perfect spot to do it in. 2 oh, as he comes into the corner. Oh. No, this is not going well. That's a 205 into the corner. 206 he peeks up at. Dak Jovic, his age must be getting to him a little bit. 200 out of the corner. This is an abysmal run for the driver of the 60 car. Scott Ganassi Racing you cannot be happy with Jovic here. Dak Jovic, previously driving for Shock Allison Racing, moved over to Scott Ganassi this season in hopes they'd be ranked A. They weren't, but out of the corner. Jovic, as he comes to the line, not a good run. 52 7 7 4. That is second to last below Pranko. Pranko above Angel. Not what Dak Jovic wants at all. Not what Scott Ganassi wants at all. Bad luck for the driver of the 60. And next up on track, this is Alex Benyako for Red Stallion Racing, the second of three members of Red Stallion Racing to go. His teammate is dead last currently, so there's probably a lot of pressure. Oh, that was a big hit out of the out of two. Lost a ton of speed. Not good for Alex Benyako. He has a lot to make up here. Binyako making his first full season. He competed a lot last season as a replacement driver for Shepard and then part-time for both Clever Haas and Rush Racing Enterprises. But he's here today in his first full-time start to a one at the line. He made up a lot of time there, but can he keep the pace? 207 into the corner, that's not bad. He is keeping it up towards that white line. He was pretty high up there for a the moment. Now he's back down. 202 out of the corner. In that Toyota Camry. Bush Beer, number 20 Toyota Camry. As he's in to three and four, he'll lose a little speed through three, but he'll gain a lot of it back through four. I expect this to actually be pretty good around Vince, where Vince Freeze is at about a 52-3. Late three, maybe. Out of the corner, he comes down to the line. Alex Benyako. 52-3-7-5. That is above Vince Freeze. And will take the sixth position. That is a very good result, but not uh, the seventh position. A great result, but not the best rank D, that being Daniel Bouchard. But overall, a great result for Alex Bignaco. And next up is Maverick Wolf racing back on track, this time with Paul Jackson in the peak antifreeze number 10 car, the person who has been on the championship podium three times. One of the most impressive guys in the field, but last time he was out here. He was in like the bottom five, if not, I think he might have been last in qualifying last time we were here. 
So he's got to be a little afraid that that might happen again. But overall, a great run through the back straightaway. That was an amazing run for Jackson. As he barrels it through, three, 189, 190. Oh, this is looking nice. Maybe not Cody Lamas nice, but maybe around Caldwell nice as he breaches 202 at the line. Oh, did not get the front straightaway run he needed, but he's still at 208. Don't get me wrong, this is still still a great run, but just not an amazing one. Not Cody Lamas. You need a little more if he wants to make it up on Cody Lamas. 203 out of two. Not many people have been able to do that. This is definitely gonna make up for what happened last season in this qualifying session by getting an amazing result. This is definitely gonna be the top guy for rank A currently. Because the one right now is Vince Freeze all the way down in eighth. This is gonna be possibly top three, maybe front row, possible pole as he comes down to the line. Paul Jackson for Maverick Wolf, 52-0-4-1. That is fourth place, beating Ryan Griffin and sticking himself on row two currently with Vance Caldwell. That was a great run for the driver of the 10 car. And it's the run he wanted, the run he needed to avenge himself from last season, but it's not pole position. From one big name to the other, we are hitting the Super Speedway King. This is Aiden Shepard in the 34 Texaco machine for Roush Racing Enterprises. The second driver to go for Roush Racing so far. Shepard is really good at these Super Speedways. He's good at keeping a draft, but right now there's no draft. And is he able to still put a good time up? without a draft. Or it's 187 mile per hour as he barrels down through three and four. He's starting to gain the speed back as he wraps it around four to start his lap. Aiden Shepard been around since the first season, won the first ever race in Sunoco Elite Series history and won the season opener last season. So. He's the only person to ever win two season openers. Can he get pole in his sixth season openers? 207, round turn one and two, doesn't look like he will. Trying to just put in a good result. 202, out of turn two. As he barrels down the back straightaway to try and get at least a decent time. Right now it looks like he's sitting around the 50... Uh, where are the point fours? Where everyone else currently stands, that's probably where he is. Pops it out of turn four. It's Aiden Shepard down to the line. The Roush Racing Enterprises, it'll be a 52-2. 3-8. That is better than I expected, being honest. Uh, 52-2. That sits him ahead of Gerardo Ron. So, that's a great result. Sixth place so far. Good job, Aiden Shepard. The 24th, if I'm the correct person, to go out on track. And the third for Modern Motorsports. This is Kieran Mulcher in the number eight chevron machine uh as after he left full front of motorsports last season to go drive elsewhere he was picked up by monarch motorsports uh with three other teammates he's, this is one of the four car teams so he's still got one teammate left that's jack halleck coming in a bit but right now it's kieran mulcher out of two this is not a good start not going well. Ooh, this is not looking good at all out of four. He's gonna need a good boost. 199 as he hits the line. That's around that Jovic range. That's not where you wanna be. 
as he drives through one and two, 205. This is, this is abysmal for Kieran Maltra here. 199 out of the corner. God, this might be breaching Sean Angel range. Not the start to the season Kieran Mulcher would want. But it's the one he's going to have to take. Oh, this is not good. He will definitely be the worst of the Monarchs so far. As he comes out of four, I expect a 52-8, 52-9. is able to be Angel. That's not saying much. Second to last for Kieran Mulcher. Not what he needed, not what his team needed right now. Unfortunate for Kieran Mulcher. And next up on track is the last of the Shock Allison racing cars. This is Skyla Johnson for Chalk Allison Racing as she was recruited mid-season last season for this team after Gatlin Downey was traded off and she performed exceptionally well. Almost got her first career win at Kansas, but a bad run out of two is not what you want to start your season. As she turns in to three or four, she is theorized to be the first female winner sometime, happening sometime this season. But with a start like that, may not be good. But she wraps it out of four, making up a lot of time. Oh. Ooh. That's not good. Didn't miss the gear. I think she just missed a gear coming out of four. And she hesitated to hit the gear. And that's going to cost her like a whole second on speed that is the thing you don't want to happen to you is for that gear to not go through and that's gonna cost her a lot of time although she's trying to make it up she was 201 out of the corner she held it there for a while so she's not gonna be down where Kieran Mantra is didn't cost her a second that may have been an exaggeration but it's going to be in the 52-4 range for what could have been a better run if she would have just gotten a better run out of 4 at the start. Across the line. 52-5, 6-4. It's ahead of Brock below Pericles. What could have been with this run, but it's what happens when you miss the gear. Bad luck for Skylar Johnson. Some truly some bad luck. Next on track is last season's pole winner. Here at Pensacola Super Speedway, this is Roman Rahal. Last season, he got pole position here, part time. Now he is full time. Same team, same car. Lots of hopes for him right now. We'll see if he can pull it off again. Out of two, he comes. Didn't get the best sweep through turn two in the pit exit though. Not the Roman Rahal we know. It's actually kind of struggling to get up to speed. Maybe they went wrong somewhere on the setup. I don't think the setup of that car is right. He's been struggling to get up to speed a little bit. 199. Oh, your last season's pole sitter. Not what he needs. Turns through turn two. Comes out of two at 200. This is not the Roman Ray Hall we know. I think something went wrong in the setup. Because he just couldn't build up speed. In the three and four. Oh, this is going to be around Brock and Karanko. This is not a good run for Roman Rahal. Not what Maverick wants. Across the line, Roman Rahal, previous pole sitter here. 52, 960. Second to last. 
very disappointing for him. A lot of high hopes that he could have been pole position again, but it's not even close. Roman Rahal, disappointing run. And next up is the team leader and owner of Fitzwater Australia Racing. This is Zachary Fitzwater Sr., the season two champion. Although he's been in a little bit of a rut ever since his title. He hasn't really been able to bounce back and be a championship threat since then. And now he's in rank C. We'll see what he can do here in qualifying in his Wilson Security Blue number 59 car. It's 187, he hits three. That's about where the mid pack is. But he's a little slow through three and four. Eh, he's making up the time. Okay, this is about average so far. As he barrels down towards the start finish line 201, as everyone else has been, really. Most others seem to be hitting around the 201, but 206 into the corner is not average. That is below average. It's water almost above that white line for a moment there. Struggling to keep speed. Ooh. His speed actually went back up a little bit, up to 202 again. That's gonna aid him a little bit through this back straightaway. Fitzwater may have just gotten the best run out of two we've seen all day. Which wasn't that good, but it was still probably the best we've seen. That made up a little time. That definitely did as he crumbs out of three and four. I expect an average, the average 52-4 here. 52-4-5-8, exactly what I expected. Above Sean Ard, his teammate, the only other member of the team to go so far, so... Right now, Fitzwater at the top, or Fitzwater Australia Racing by one thousandth of a second over Sean Ard. That little bit of makeup time after getting that run out of two was actually great, and it helped him get a good midfield time. So, a pretty decent job out of Fitzwater. Next up in his first ride back since season four, his rookie seasons, this is Julio Caesar. Back in a full time car, this is the Fitzwater Australia. Shell V Power number 43 car that used to belong to Nathan Ormond before his little incident caused him to be ejected from his car. Caesar was the one who took over, so now it's his turn to show if he has what it takes. So far, it's looking good. 187 as he hits the corner that's better than his teammates have been. Then again, what else do you expect? He was a wit he won at his home track on his birthday back in season four, which was one of the greatest moments of the series. But as he comes out of three and four, Julio Caesar trying to get a good run here. 201 like everyone else, that's where you wanna be. 207 as he hits the corner. This is a good run so far for Julio Caesar, definitely better than both of his teammates. He wraps it around. Last time we saw him, he was in the 88 car, which is now DJ Curtis. Caesar trying to get himself a good result for Fitzwater Australia Racing. And it starts in this qualifying session as he wraps into three. Can he keep it above 199? No, he's going to dip into 199, but he's going to jump back up to 200 pretty quickly. This is probably the most average run we'll see all day, right near the middle of 52-4. It's about where you see 52-4, 52-3, That was a lot quicker than I thought it was. That's a 52-2-8-7. That's above Daniel Bouchard. Right below Jordan, that's seven. Very impressive for Julio Caesar. His first ride back proving that he definitely deserved the ride. And Caesar, impressing. Great job for the Brazilian. And next out on track, this is Jack Benyako, the last member of Red Stallion Racing to go. This is the cousin of Alex Benyako. Both of them are rookies. Both of them competed in lights last season. So right now they have pretty mirroring careers. Other than the fact that Jack Benyako did not compete part-time last season. 
He's just joining in this season without any actual experience in this car. So we'll see if he can actually beat out his cousin. Right now he seems to be 186 into the corner. Which is a little bit lower than Alex. So he's going to have to speed it up if he wants to beat Alex. Right now the lead rookie though, Daniel Bouchard at a 52-360. Hits fourth gear in the best spot you possibly can, right as you come out of the corner. But it's a 200, just barely below 201. And not an amazing one down the front straightaway, 206 in the corner. He needs to be able to wrap this corner well to keep his speed up so we can kind of rematch the others. But he won't, it'll be 201 out of the corner. Red Stallion had one good result, one terrible result in last, and Vinyako seems to be right near the middle. 198 through the corner. Not able to hit 190, keep it in 199 or higher. Some were able to keep it in 200 or higher, and that's where Cody Lamas and Jeffrey Fingai are. But as he comes out of the corner, Jack Vinyako comes down to the line. Not gonna be amazing, not gonna be terrible. 52-6-3-1. Oh, that's actually worse than I expected it to be. It's right above Cranko, below Brock. So, it's, yeah, that was worse than I expected. I expected a high 55 between Pericles and Paulson, but no. Not a very good run for Jack Benyako. And next up is another Thunder Sport GP driver. This is Lorenz Alog, the second to last member of this team to go. Uh, in the 32, Toyota Camry, Hardy's Toyota Camry. Wonderful Racing Australia, he is back in this equipment, but not the same team. Epic Motorsports is dead now as they sold the equipment over. He did not. He had a little shake, he had a two there. But as he comes in to three and four, trying to make up that time, trying to make up for the lost time. Right now, it doesn't seem like he's making up too much of it. Can't get too shaky out of that corner. Although Jeffrey Thin guy didn't got second, it's really hard to recover from that. Which, Lorenz isn't doing too bad at it. 201. Julio Caesar had the 201, and he ended up in eighth, I believe. So, Let's see what Lorenz can do. 207. This is looking good. Lorenzo Log has not won a race since his reign at Cover Haas Racing in Season 2. And he got two win race wins that season. Now he's trying to get a win this season. Many seasons later, he's at 201. He was at 202 for a while as so he turns it into 3. And he keep it above 198, which is about where you want to stay. He will. This is pretty much mirroring Julio Caesar's run, which in that case, around Julio Caesar's at a 52-2, maybe? Out of four, good run down the front straightaway. It's a 52-3-3-3 right below Julio Caesar. Good run for Lorenzo Log, but it's the worst of the Thundersports so far. Thundersport has performed very well so far in this qualifying session. Lorenzo Log is no different. Next up on track, the second to last member for Scott Ganassi Racing. This is Roger Ray, coming from the Panasonic Light Series. And his Sonata Elite Series career has been shaky, to say the least. Dead last in points in Season 4, where he was forced to drop down the lights for no offers in Elites. But he did phenomenal in Elites and was able to earn the respect back, get back up into elites, and he's driving for Scott Ganassi now. And it's a good lap so far. He's flashing between 188 and 187 currently. 189 now, now he's starting to pick up his speed. <laughs> Roger Ray proving that all of his bad results were a fluke as he comes down. 202 on the line. That is above average. Definitely. He hits 208. Oh boy. Roger Ray 
This is a great lap so far. And wrap it around. Out of the corner. Can he get 203? Yes. 203 out of the corner. He barrels down the back straight. This is a great run so far. He's into three. He gets it back on that white line. He's starting to peak below it now. He stays a in the 200s. This is an excellent run for Roger Ray. I expect this to be around Caldwell and Jackson. What a run for Roger Ray. His first time back since his failure in season four. And it's a 52-092. That is fifth place for Roger Ray. What a performance. That should be proof right there that he has what it takes. And fifth place is a great result for Roger Ray. Clever Haas Racing has been absolutely on fire so far in qualifying, holding a 1-2 currently. Can Eric Monaco match them? And then William Duncan will be up later. Eric trying to just get a good run out of two. That's the important part. He actually did very well here last season when he was driving for Red Stallion. So it's expected that he does well, but we expected Roman Rahal to do well as well. So can't say anything yet. 187, 186 in the corner. That's not top two pace like his teammates have. He's trying to make up time as he hits 190, 191. Out of two, it'll be 193. Out of four. Ugh. 201 at the line, but a little bit on the lower side of 201, which may not get him to 207. It's barely going to get him to 206. Although his teammates have performed exceptionally well, Eric is not up the pace that he was last season at Red Stallion at this qualifying session. 201. Out of two. Eric Monaco not going to live up to what his teammates did. He's going to be about the 52 fours. That's going to be a person in the 52 fours. Average is starting to lean toward the 52 threes though, so this is going to start being below average. 52 5, 14, below Cordell Paulson and above Nick Pericles. Oh, nowhere near his teammates. A whole, like, uh, that's like seven tenths off Cody Lamas. Disappointing run for Eric Monaco in his first ride back for Clipper Haas Racing. And next up is the third member, or no, this is the last member of Fitzwater Australia Racing. This is Carson Bowers, a previous winner at this track and the runner-up here last season. So far, the team has been performing pretty well here at qualifying. Fitzwater and Art are near the mid-pack, and Caesar is actually close to the top, so... We'll see what Bowers can do. And he's starting off strong in 187, almost 188. As he barrels into turn three, now he's at 188. As the camera turns, he hits 189 through four now. This is a very nice run so far. Very nice setup for the lap. 202, very nice for Carson Bowers. He hits 207 as he's into turn one and two. Carson Bowers, six time winner in the series, all coming under Fitzwater Australia. He's been with Fitzwater Australia since season one. Very committed to this team. He flashed back up at three, 203. That's what Fitzwater did earlier. Got a little bit of a kick out of two, got a little bit of speed before it dropped back down. But again, that's gonna help. That's going to aid him here. Fitzwater Australia seems to have something with those setups. He dropped into 199 for just a moment, but peaked back up into 200 pretty much immediately as he comes out at 3 and 4. This is going to be around Roger Ray. 
and Ryan Griffin. This is going to be the best for this team so far. 52 to 16. It's between Shepard and Griffin. A great result for Carson Bowers and the top driver for Fitzwater Australia Racing in qualifying. Wouldn't expect anything less from Carson Bowers. Great job out of him. And next up on track, Connor Hurley for Fallout Racing. Yes, this late, Connor Hurley had a great practice run in his first race back since season four when he had his rookie season as well, if I'm correct. Now he's driving under Fallout Racing with his teammate, PJ Karanko. And he's the last rank D to go in the qualifying session. And here we'll have one more rank C as well, then it's B's and A's from here on out. So, which the rank C is going to be in a few from Kirk. Yeah, Howard. But Connor Hurley, this isn't going bad. It's a good start to the run. Nice placement of the shift. Because of the rank D equipment, he's only going to hit 201. 207 in the corner. This is a great run for a rank D. Connor Hurley had a great run in practice, and it's proving that it wasn't just the draft. He has speed. He knows what to do around here, it seems. Out of two, he hits 202. Very nice. I'm very impressed with him right now. He comes into three and four. With the equipment he has, Fallout Racing didn't impress with PJ Karenko, but the runner up at the shootout is doing the opposite, and he's impressing very much for a rank D. Highest rank D currently, Daniel Bouchard. Can he beat him? Will Connor Hurley be the top rank D starting the race? No! Wow! One thousandth, but Bouchard will be the highest rank D. 52, 361. That was so close. I thought he had it, but he didn't. But still, a very impressive run for Connor Hurley and Fallout Racing. Clever Haas Racing, again, they've been on fire, but Eric Monaco did not live up to it. What about Duncan? William Duncan, the Sia number four, Dodge Charger for Clever Haas Racing, the last member of this team to go. Can he impress? Duncan comes out of two. He has been one of the most consistent drivers, if not the most consistent driver in the last two seasons. But does he have the consistent speed to keep up in qualifying? It looks like he might. As he turns into three, can we see a podium lockout for Clever Haas Racing? What a day that would be for the team. 193 out of the corner. Good shift as he comes down. 201, barely not 202 at the line. Is he gonna hit 208? Yes! Not Cody Lama speed though. Again, we're not seeing Cody Lama speed out of anyone else. Lamas might be a rookie pole sitter. Only person to ever do that other than well, a debut pole sitter. Other than Lamas, if he's able to pull it off, the only one to ever do that other than him was Tyler Thaber in season three, where he got pole position at Todd Ring in his first start. Can Lamas repeat that? William Duncan coming out of four. Another impressive run for Clever House Racing, but this may just be down to Duncan being Duncan. Across the line comes William Duncan. A 52-0-3-7, that is fourth place. Bring Clever House Racing a 1-2-4 currently. What a qualifying for this team so far. What a qualifying for the team overall. Few people left to go, but overall, great qualifying. We finished up the rank D's earlier. Now it's the end of the rank C's. This is Jack Halleck for Maverick GP. One of the strongest 
uh, drivers we've seen in coming in past seasons go for Maverick for a while. Best ranked seat currently, Carson Bauer is a 52 216. Can Halleck top that? Right now, the answer looks to be maybe no. 187, he peeks into the corner. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. They'll want to try and hit that 201 barrier that everyone seems to be trying to hit. Good shift. But not 201, it's 200, just barely. He's barely below 201 as he hits the line. 206, that'll be the cost of not hitting 201. He actually improves his speed mid-corner. He wind his line a little bit to keep some speed going. That'll cost him a little bit of speed out of the corner as he drops to 201. Down the back straight I don't know. He's not going to be the best ranked C. That's going to go to Carson Bowers. Very impressive run out of Carson Bowers. It's hard to beat that, but... Comes into 3 and 4. What can Halleck do? Previous winner at this track as well. This track's been around since Season 2, but it's only been hosting openers since Season 4. What can Halleck do here? One here in Season 3. Can he get a good qualifying position as he comes to the line? It's a 52-5-12. Ugh. That is worse than I expected it to be. Just above Eric Monaco, just below Cordell Paulson. And actually one of the worst ranked C's in the field. So, not a good run for Jack Halleck. Now we're on to the final six, and they are six heavy hitters. And it's going to be a gauntlet for the Clever Haas Racing Your Day to survive. Starting with this man, John Arndt. For Scott Ganassi Racing. He, had, he was one of the strongest, if not the strongest guy last season, but just lost it in the last round of the season. John Arndt is a huge hitter. We'll see what he can do to start the gauntlet for the Clever Haas guys. If they can survive, John Arndt, there's still a long ways to go as he, as he rounds turn three and four. Out of the corner. Speeding up, it's 201, almost 202 as he crosses the line. It was a great run out of four. 207 into the corner. He's not gonna reach 208s, it looks like. So he so Cody Lamas is gonna survive John Arndt. But he's still got a long ways to go. Arndt is closer to the apron than I've seen some others be. 202 out of the corner though, it seems to have worked. As he rounds turn three, 200, 199. Can he keep it above that? Can he push it back up? He will. Back up to 200. Arndt, very solid run. Looks to be around Gerardo Ron, Aiden Shepard, those kinds of people. Good result for him overall. Scott Ganassi Racing gonna be happy with this. 52 to 94. Right below Julio Caesar, not the best Scott Ganassi. That going, Roger Ray. Great job to John Arndt, though. That's only the first part of this gauntlet, though, that's going to be going through. Good job, John. The gauntlet continues, as next up is Scott Roush. For Roush Racing Enterprises, his own team. Scott Roush, another person who's been around since season one, although he took a season break in the middle. He's still been around since the very beginning. Uh, took a break to let an Another driver, John Art, take his car. Uh, gave the driver an opportunity and sacrificed himself. He came back a season later. He's been driving ever since. Scott Roush, out of four. That was an excellent run out of four. Wow, he gained a ton of speed. At first, it was like an okay run, but now he's hitting 207. Wow, he gained speed very quickly out of four. That was an excellent run. They're trying to put the gauntlet onto Cody Lamas, but no one seems to be there. 
Hover Haas just seemed to find a gear that no one else could find. Scott Roush, this looks like it's going to be around Roger Ray, maybe, if he can keep it up. Oh, he's dipped from the 199s. Bring it back up, Roush. There you go. Looks like it's going to be actually around the Bowers Griffin area. Unless he gets another amazing run like he did before. Not an amazing run out of four like was before. But 52-3-2-1. Bubble runs along below John Art, so right where Arndt was, really. But still, a good run out of Scott Roush. Not the best for his team. That would be Aiden Shepard. But a good result overall for Scott Roush. Four people left to go, and it starts with Chris Dodd, who got an absolutely incredible practice run. It wasn't necessarily practice. He just had to make a lap to put himself on the board, and he got fourth fastest. Chris Dodd, last member of Full Frontal, or second to last member of Full Frontal to go, other than Anderson, showed a lot of speed in his run. 202 across the line, Chris Dodd. Really impressing. As he turns into one and two, only at 207. Looked like he could have reached 208 there, just barely didn't. As he wraps around the corner, can he keep it above in 203 range? No, can he keep it 202? He will. Out of two, he's gonna barrel down the back straightaway. The last part-timer to go. Highest part-timer, Cody Lamas. It's gonna be a bit of a struggle to beat that. <laughs> Dodd, been around since season one as well, though he's been on and off for the last few seasons. Part time for Full Frontal Motorsports though, previous owner of CJ Racing. As he comes out of four, comes down to the line, Chris Dodd will take a 52-261. That's above Gerard Aron, below Aiden Shepard, and overall, not bad. Tenth, currently. 10th place is very nice for Chris Dodd in his first race back, his first qualifying back. And that's a great result after a great practice for Chris Dodd. Three people left to go in single car qualifying and Philip Scott, the last member of Maverick Wolf Racing, is out on track here. Maverick Wolf Racing has had an up and down qualifying but has Paul Jackson in the top five currently, trying to get Philip Scott in there as well. 188 as he enters the corner. That is probably as good as you can get. This may be rivaling Cody Lamas. Could Maverick Wolf Racing top the boards with Honda? Two oh two on the line, almost two oh three. Two oh eight in the corner. Oh, oh, peak two oh nine. We are now having a rival to Cody Lamas here. Can Philip Scott pull it off? The legend himself. Can he get pole position? Can Maverick get hit? There's get two poles in a row at this track. Two oh four for a moment out of the corner. This is gonna be close. 202 into three and four. Can he keep it? At 201. Oh, this is gonna be good. Can Philip Scott dethrone the Clever Haas Racing Annihilation of qualifying so far? Crosses the line. No, but he will get front row. Second place, a 51-9-5-3. It was close, but still a 10th off, and Philip Scott will line up second so far. Great job for Philip Scott, and Honda has got to be very happy with that. Two drivers left to go in qualifying, and it starts with the only German driver in the field. This is Hans Windhelm. For Thundersport, the last member of Thundersport to go. Thundersport has had a good qualifying so far. Let's see what Windhelm can do. 
actually going quick. Could we see Hans Windhelm pull off pole position? It's looking good. Like I said, the last few guys seem to be the gun because they're the most threatening looking names in the field right now. 202. Can he get up to 208? Yep, but not gonna reach 209. Falling to 207, 206, 205. Can he keep it up in 202 range, 203 range? He's got 203. He might be challenging for front row. Maybe not for pole. We'll need a good run in three and four if he wants to run for pole. And even then, he's got one very, very big name coming up after. As he comes out of four, Hans Windhelm. This is going to be top five, it looks like. Can he knock Duncan out of the top five now? Yes, 52-0-6. No! Actually, I thought he did. He didn't. He's below Jackson in seventh. That was weird. Hans Windhelm. He was up there. He definitely was, but he's not going to hit pole position or the front row, keeping Philip Scott on front row and guaranteeing Cody Lamas will be on the front row for the race. But still a great result for Hans Windhelm at Thundersport. This is it. The final man to go fastest in practice, season three champion, number two on the all-time win list, the Arby's number 40 Chevrolet for full front of motorsports. This is Max Anderson. Probably the biggest threat in the field. <laughs> in my personal opinion. As he comes out of two, can he match Cody Lamas? It looks like we're going to get a show. 188 into the corner. That's matching Cody Lamas. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, he's putting on a show for us now. Out of three and four to start the last lap of single car qualifying. 202, almost 203. Now the fight is on. 208, no 209, 209, he hits it, oh boy, it's gonna be fun now, he's matching Lamas, can Max Anderson pull it off, 204, out of the corner, oh no, oh Cody, you had a long reign, but I think he might, he might, 201 through the corner. This is close. This is going to be really close. Out of the last corner. Can Anderson sweep practice in qualifying as he comes to the line? No! Max Anderson will get on the front row, but Cody Lamas, pole position on debut. Max Anderson, a 51.903, half a tenth faster than Philip Scott, but still seven hundredths off of Cody Lamas, and Max Anderson will miss out on the sweep. But a front row start for Max Anderson is what he needed. What a performance! for the driver of the 40 and what a performance for Cody Lamas on debut getting pole position. Congratulations to Cody Lamas. What a result. Let's go look at your full qualifying result. As we look at the finishing results for qualifying, Cody Lamas is on pole position on his debut. Anderson, Scott, Finn Guy gets a nice fourth place after actually making his lap pretty early in his last uh, start, his last season opener.
It's a great qualifying result for both Fingai and Caldwell. Duncan in sixth, Jackson in seventh, Windhelm in eighth, Roger Ray in ninth, and the rookie Ryan Griffin will round out your top ten for the... Whew. For rookies, it's Ryan Griffin on top. For part-times, it's Cody Lamas on top, on the very top. But if you look near the rear, some very disappointing qualifying results. Angel and Ray Hall, most of all. Definitely thought they could pull it off, pull something off. Brock as well. Halleck, Johnson, Pericles, Paulson, Carlson, previous winner here. Fitzwater. Even people like Irvine, I expected to be Irvine higher. Is uh, I expected Irvine to be higher. Rowe, I expected him to be higher. Lots of disappointing results, but a lot of really good ones, and especially for Cody Lamas. Congratulations to Lamas and Anderson locking the front row here in Pensacola. The next time that we'll be seeing will be round one of season six of the Sunoco Elite Series, the actual race at Pensacola. And until then, guys.